What's going on, everyone? This is the first episode of Game Time Excellence, where we talk about your mission, mindset, and mastery. Here today, we have Eve Batoba, good friend of mine. Uh, he works for the Dolphins. He does player development, correct? That's right. Well, player engagement, but yeah, I mean, that's just what it's technically called, but it's player development. Player development, okay. And um, so, Eve, for the people that should know who you are, that don't know who you are, let us know, let us know more about you. Eve Batoba, originally from the Democratic Republic of Congo, uh, lived there until we were forced to move due to a civil war, moved to South Africa, post-apartheid South Africa while Nelson Mandela was still president. Uh, it was extremely racist whenever we lived over there. So we left there, moved to Texas where we had some family. And in Texas, fell in love with the game of football, playing football. I was fortunate enough to be able to walk on at Oklahoma State University and eventually earn a scholarship while I was over there. I was awesome. teammates with Shamil. We were in the same defensive backfield for a couple of years. And then from there, did some jobs in the sports industry, went to work at different universities. And then now I've been with the Miami Dolphins five years now, working in player engagement, where we engage, educate, and empower the players to reach their full potential, both on and off the field. And it's been a blast knowing that you can have an impact on somebody's life. So been loving it, man. That's awesome. No, he does, yeah, he does a great, great job. You know, Eve still helps me. Uh, till this day, you know, I call him like two o'clock in the morning and, and ask him for help. Uh, and sometimes he picks up. <laughs> yeah, she, she thinks it's uh, his mistress, but it's, it's just me. So, <laughs> no, but um, no, me and Eve, you know, at Oklahoma State, Eve was always driven. He always had a mission. He always knew where he was going. Uh, and now I feel like Eve is living in his purpose. And you know, I think having a mission is one of the most important things you can do because it drives everything we do in life. And so, Eve, like, you know, what's your mission with your with, with player engagement at the Dolphins? What's the mission? Yeah. As of right now, you know, the biggest my overall big guy dream for years now has been that I want to be able to unify the country of Congo through the power of sport. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you're aware, but Congo is one of the richest, if not the richest country in the world in terms of minerals. Unfortunately, the citizens live like some of the poorest in the world. So I'm like, yo, how can I help bridge that gap? And I know that my journey is unique because of, uh, you know, American sports, being a student athlete, which is one of the most unique experiences in the world. And I've always thought to myself, okay, I want to be involved with the business of sports, but how can I use that to give back to the greater good and something that I'm especially passionate about? And a lot of that just has to do with the corruption in the country of Congo, unfortunately. Right. But even now with player engagement, it's, hey, how do you get these players to align with what their bigger vision, their bigger mission for the lives are? Because at the end of the day, football is a great, phenomenal experience, especially being a pro athlete playing at the highest level in the world. Yeah. But that's exactly what it is. It's an experience. You can't really call it a career. Right. And right. it's all about figuring out, hey, how do I leverage this athlete identity, this platform to be able to, uh, you know, just uh, align it with my overall mission. Mm -hmm. well, that's awesome. And I, I definitely can agree with that. So, you know, for you guys that don't know anything about me, you know, I, I went to Oklahoma State, like Eve said, I also went to the University of Wyoming where I played football and I went to the NFL for four years and, you know, everyone knows what the NFL stands for. Not, Not for long. long. Yep. And so uh, my financial advisor always told me, Shamil, uh, football is a temp job you know it's like it's a glorified temp job it's like working at mcdonald's you never go work at mcdonald's for your entire life i mean maybe I mean, you like the manager or way more glorified <laughs> than mcdonald's <laughs> yes it's yes incredible. it's incredible uh, and, and that's the thing don't ever let anybody downplay how like there's a sense of pride that comes with saying yo i was a professional oh yeah played at the highest level in the world yeah and nobody should ever diminish that yeah and 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 when you when you know that when you know there's uh there when you have the end in mind when you have the finish line in mind it changes your mindset you know it changes how you look at things it changes how committed you are it changes how much you want to grow you know what i mean so can you touch on that as far as like man you know you want to bridge this gap and that's what it's all about in business and in professional athlete as a as a student whatever it is all you're trying to do is bridge the gap between where you are and where your audience is. And 
so um you know what's your mindset like through the tough times and how you're trying to grow and all that somebody told me a long time ago that you should have a goal so big that you haven't even turned into the person that's able to accomplish that yet right mm. To me, what that means is every next level of your life is going to demand a different you or a different level of you. Right. So if you know that, hey, my ultimate goal requires level 10 Eve. And right now I know I'm at level five and I got five more levels to go. That automatically forces me to have a growth mindset. Right. So I know that I have to align, you know, where I want to be with where I'm at right now. And how do I bridge that gap? Right. If I know, if, if you're somebody and you know that someday you want to be a CEO of a company, well, shoot, all right, let me research all these different CEOs. What kind of education do they have? What relationships do they know? What clubs are they in? Mm -hmm. You know, how do I bridge that gap between where I want to be and where I'm at right now? Right, and right. I think it's so important to just think in those terms, man, because whenever you do, it changes your daily habits. It changes the way that you think. Mm -hmm. And it really, it forces you to align your day-to-day -day actions with who you ultimately want to be. Mm -hmm. And if, if what I'm doing doesn't align with who I say I want to be, then it, 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 is my word any good? Right, right. I think that's the biggest thing. Like, how true are you to yourself? Right. Um, emotional intelligence is one of the most important things in determining how successful you're going to be. You know, mm -hmm. that, that's probably the number one factor, even above IQ. There are a lot of smart people who aren't successful. Mm -hmm. But you have some, some people who may not be as uh, intellectual as others, but right, they're right, able right. to achieve a great level of success because they're self-aware. Because right. they understand social situations, because they know the value of relationships and community, and they're motivated, and they know what drives them. So, yeah, man, I think all those different things, but really just keeping in mind that growth mindset will go into determining what habits I put in place, mm -hmm. but also how do I level up to get to uh, where I ultimately want to get. Right, right, right. So, so for you, okay, what, uh, so what I hear is, one, hold yourself accountable. Uh, give yourself some, have some social, uh, have some awareness. And so what systems and structures do you have in place so you can do this day in and, and day out? In, in my job right now, just working in player engagement in the, in, in, in the NFL, there are a lot of things on a day-to-day -day basis that are going to be unpredictable. I think that's just a big part of it, right? So right. Like my, one of my supervisors always tells me, expect the unexpected. Right. So I think... As a so part flexible? Yeah, absolutely. You know, okay. our, our head coach, even Brian Flores, always says, adapt or die. Right, right. <laughs> the world that we live in, you got to be able to adapt or right. you're going to get left behind. Right. And with that being said, routine is so critical, mm -hmm. right? So I think that having an established morning routine, I know that whenever I wake up in the morning, first thing that I'm doing is I'm trying to read, I'm, I'm reading scripture. Mm -hmm. I'm reading scripture, I get into my prayer, and then I get ready for the day. Get ready for the day, I go work out. Whenever I'm done working out, sorry, not ready for the day, I guess I get ready for my workout. Go right. work out. Whenever I'm done working out, then I can get started with my day. Right? And then my nightly routine as well. I know that hey, I want I want to write something. And by the time that it's time for one-on-one -on -one time for me and my wife, I want to be voided of all distractions right, so right. that we can have actual intentional time together. So, um, you know, th th that's just a part of some of my routines, some of my systems. Somebody told me, I, I was actually reading a book by James Clear called Atomic Habits. Mm -hmm. and in this book, he said that winners and losers have the same goals, right? Okay, okay. I have somebody is training for the Olympics right now, and their goal is to get the gold medal. Right, right. And there's going to be only one person that gets the gold medal. There's going to be somebody that comes in last. Mm -hmm. They have the exact same goals. So it's not necessarily that, hey, goals are this, goals are that. It's good to have goals and to set those goals. But right. ultimately, what's going to separate you are your day-to-day -day habits and mm. that discipline. So what's that book called? Atomic Habits by James Atomic. Clear. Uh, okay. Absolutely recommended. It was one of the best books that I read in 2019. Okay, okay. Um, so Atomic Habits. And that, that's a good transition for, uh, I think it's, so when I played for the Patriots, man, yeah. I saw Julian Edelman, I saw Devin McCourty, I saw Tom Brady. What they did, one thing they did, so I want to touch on this. One thing that they did was they took care of themselves. So uh, a lot of times we look at business, we look at life as a sprint, but really it's a marathon. And in order to play, go from college to the NFL, you have to have the marathon mentality. You have to take care of yourself. Uh, mentally, you have to take care of yourself. Physically, you have to take care of yourself. Emotionally, spiritually, all that right there. 
And, and I saw them do that. They got in the cold tub, hot tub, um, chiropractor, sleep, all that type of stretch. And so just because we're not in the, the, the fitness world, the athlete world anymore, we yeah. still need to do those same things. So what do you do to take care of yourself so you can go through the, the long haul of your yeah. job? Well, shoot, let me tell you something too, man. I think a lot of people talk about, you know, athletes have to do this in order to be higher performers. I talk to athletes who transition out of the sport and they're mm-hmm. going into another career. Mm-hmm. And they still realize like, yo, not only do I still have to be in shape physically, but I still have to be able to maintain those relationships that I care about. Mm-hmm. And I still have to be taking care of, uh, of my body, of course, mm-hmm. but I also have to be sharpening my mind. I have to be investing into my profession. Mm-hmm. I think there's research. Research tells us, uh, psychologists research say that there are three elements of human happiness. One is personal growth. Two is connecting to others. And mm-hmm. three is contribution to society. Whenever somebody loses football, they're losing all three of those at once. Mm-hmm. Right? Personal growth. You're not lo- no longer training, right? Training, working out, all these things that you're doing, recovering, rehab, all that. Connection to others, the locker room. A lot of times people say that the locker room is what they miss more than anything else whenever uh, football is over. Mm-hmm. And then you have contribution to society. Some people feel like football is a contribution to society. And then other people, you know, they have camps, they have, you know, whatever workout programs they're right, involved right. in the communities that they're playing in, and all those things. So now they have to recreate that whenever football is over. Mm-hmm. Okay, personal growth. Am I still reading? Am I still writing? Am I still in scripture? Am I going to church? Am I practicing my faith? Right? Mm-hmm. Am I, how am I developing in those areas? Right, right. Connecting to others. What community groups am I a part of? Do I keep in touch with people? Am I FaceTiming mm-hmm. with my family? So right now we're in a quarantine because of the coronavirus. Right, right. And you see people are, are, are getting on Zoom calls and they're connecting with all sorts of people. I think that's almost a blessing in the sky, seeing how connected people are actually being. Mm-hmm. But then contribution to society. I think it's so pivotal that there is a philanthropic aspect to your life, right? Mm -hmm. Like, how are you helping other people? Even if it's just a random act of kindness, you know, paying for somebody's (laughs) groceries that are in line behind you or in the drive through whatever. You know, small things like that give us more fulfillment as human beings. Mm -hmm. So, you know, those are some of the things that I try to implement in my everyday life. Mm -hmm. Uh, I know that me personally, I'm a, uh, a reader. Okay. I used to be a lot more avid of a reader, of a reader than I am now. Uh, hey, hold, hold on real quick. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, let's stop him. Let's stop him real quick. He said he's a reader. Me and Eve have been, we, we were supposed to start a book. Uh, hey, I said I used to be more avid of a reader than I am now. <laughs> but yeah, okay. He Can Grow Rich is the book that we were supposed to be reading together. Okay, okay, okay. I'm just saying, you know what I mean? That's what feeling hey, for. I got to hold you accountable. That's it. Absolutely. No, uh, I, I appreciate I appreciate you calling me out. Man. Yeah, accountability is needed. No problem. But keep going. My bad. My bad. Yeah. So you know, just being a reader, um, and even from a creative space. Like my wife has an LLC that I've been helping her out with, and that's actually been a really good outlet for me to just get in touch with my creative side, whether it's video content, mm-hmm. content creation, creative writing, things like that. I think mm-hmm. it's important to have a creative outlet. Uh, no matter who you are in life. If you write poetry, write poetry. I'm a spoken word. Uh, I have uh, a friend of mine who is an actor in Hollywood, but he also does uh, screenwriting. So he mm-hmm. writes, you know, different screens and, and, and plays on the side just because he knows that he needs that creative outlet. Right, um, right. He teaches a tennis class, right? He, he, does, bu- he do- does boxing in his free time. Mm-hmm. I think that all those things are uh, so pivotal in terms of just holistic development. Right, right. No, definitely. So what is, so, you know, I'm all about uh, actionable items. You know, one yeah. thing I do um, is I have a moment of, of gratitude where I close my eyes and I put my hands on my chest. And, you know, I really think about the things in my life that, you know, I'm grateful for. Uh, so what is one thing somebody can do today to take care of themselves physically, emotionally, and spiritually to withstand the long haul of the week or the month or the year? What is like one thing from your life that you can give to someone else that they can do? Going back to what you said about mission, I think Mm -hmm. one of the most important things for people is that they have a personal mission statement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Every company has it, successful organizations have it, businesses have it. If you know that these companies have that, why not do that for your own personal life? Treat yourself like you're a business, right? Right. So you incorporate it, you Inc. Mm -hmm. So I think that- You Inc, I like that. Yeah, you Inc, one, just write out a personal mission statement for your life, mm-hmm. right? 
engage, educate, and empower individuals to reach their full potential both on and off the field. Mm. Boom. Mission statement. Yeah, I like that. Um, understanding what that is for yourself and, and aligning with that. I think mm. that's so critical. Practice your faith. You know, okay. whatever it is, whether you're Christian, Muslim, um, you know, Buddhist, you know, mm-hmm. whatever that is. How are you plugging in? How are you staying in type with that? Does that mean prayer? Does that mm-hmm. mean reading scripture or the Quran or whatever mm-hmm. that is, right? Mm-hmm. Does that mean meditation? I think it's important to have that in place, right? From a physical standpoint, what do you like to do physically? Mm-hmm. I think there's a misconception with exercise and working out. Ah, I got to force myself to do that. Right, right. You got to force yourself to do anything. Yeah, whenever I transitioned out of Oklahoma State, I probably went about two months without hitting the weight room. Right. I did not lift anything because I got so tired of coaches telling me how to train myself physically. And then I eventually got to the point to where I was like, well, you sure, you know what? I don't have to do what they say. Let me right, only right. go and do what I like. Yeah. So I was able to tailor and personalize my own workouts to you know my own liking. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that was really beneficial for me. So figure out exactly what it is that you like to do. Is it yoga? Is it running? Is it weightlifting? And why are you doing it? You know, is it Pilates? You know, there's so many different uh, different ways that you can do it. You know, more than one way to skin a cat. You don't have to do what anybody else does. And then even from, from a professional aspect, I think that one of the most important things that you can do right now is understanding who is in your network, right? I'm a firm, firm believer that you are one connection away from having your dream job. Mm-hmm. Reaching out to individuals in your internal network. And then from there, you can expand into an external network. One of the best ways to do that, honestly, is just creating a LinkedIn profile. Mm -hmm. Create a LinkedIn profile, be active on LinkedIn, connect with individuals, reach out to them, ask important questions, Mm -hmm. and, you know, just grow that way. Um, Somebody told me a long time ago, you're either in the relationship business or you're out of business. Right, right. Ooh, I like that. When it comes to your professionalism. Right, So, yeah, those would be the three things that I would say, man. I think that, you know, being able to practice your faith, understanding exactly what it is, uh, that, that you physically stay physically fit, right. uh, creating a LinkedIn profile and reaching out to your internal sphere of influence. And mm-hmm. I guess it was four things because I also said that mission statement for yourself yeah. is so important to actually uh, establish a culture. Right, right. You know what's so cool about what you said is it's it's not just for athletes because this is great for athletes. If you are uh, um, in business and you're a business leader or you're an employee or you're uh um, the CEO or whatever, you know what I mean? Who's in your network? You know, um, right. are you in the relationship business? Um, how are you doing like physically? Are you doing things you like? Are you waking up and, and, and doing Pilates or spin class or whatever it is? How are you keeping yourself healthy? Yeah. Um, what's your mission statement? What's you Inc? What is your mission statement? And uh, um, what is the things that you like, the creative outlet that, that you can go and do and, and yeah. find yourself in? You know, I love that. Uh, because I mean, even right now during this quarantine and, you know, people being at home, it's easy to just bum around Oh yeah, on social media and not do anything uh, productive. I have this list, right? Things that you could do right now um, that are actually really productive, don't really require so much time, but you have free time so you can do it. You can start writing a book, writing a play, or just mm-hmm. writing in general, right? Mm-hmm. Starting an LLC, launching a podcast, mm-hmm. watching a TED Talk. Open a Shopify account, call a friend, send a letter to a loved one, smile at a stranger, practice your jump shot, do planks in the backyard, fill out your census form, right? Those are necessary. Right, uh, right. You have refinancing your mortgage, if that's something that you've been thinking about doing, but you've been putting it off. Buying online from a local business mm. or even getting delivery from a local restaurant that you really want to check out. So right, things right. like that. It's, it's, it's not a time to just say, okay, well, shoot, we have to be on lockdown. Let me just be a bum. Yeah, that's the crazy thing about it, man, is because, like, we all have time. You know, I talk about this a lot in my speeches. I talk about this a lot just in general to people. Time is taken away. And the yeah. fruits of your labor or the non-fruits of your labor, whatever you want to say, is determined by how you spend your time. And yeah. so we all have a choice right now to be productive or not be productive. So it, it's, look, yeah. I agree with everything you that's said the right there valuable asset that you have is time people think it's money but time is the most valuable asset you have i was reading a book once by tony evans called uh our god is awesome and in this book he was saying that you can't determine how old somebody is based on their birthday Mm -hmm. right because if you're 30 years old but you're not going to die until you're 95 Mm -hmm. well then shoot you're still relatively young right but if 
you're 30 years old and you're only going to live until you're 35. Well, by the time you're 30, you're freaking old already. Right, right. Um, it's hard to determine how old somebody is based on the birthday. You can only determine how old somebody is based on their death date. Right. Because nobody actually knows when they're going to die, when their death date is. Mm -hmm. That's why it's so important that you value the time that you have each and every single day. And there's a right. season for everything. Maybe it's, hey, I'm in the rhythm right now where I have to be really locked in at, at my sport. Right. Maybe it's a season right now where I really have to invest with this relationship. Mm -hmm. or maybe it's a season right now where I have to just be completely unplugged and relaxed. Whatever it is, identify it. Use that time wisely. Crucial. Mm -hmm. so, that's, so that's the key right there. See, I love that. See, now it's about to transition to the next thing, and that's so perfect. Uh, yeah. See, that's why that's why we boys, man, because you, you know, <laughs> right here. Man, we're going to say my wavelength. <laughs> yes, sir. So uh, identifying, right, what you need in order to uh, really be focused and master the skills you need to master for the season that you're in. Yeah. Because if you look at all the greats, all the greats, if they're legendary, if, okay, you look at LeBron James, the reason why he's so good is because he mastered the fundamentals. If you look at Tom Brady, he mastered the fundamentals. If you look at people who are uh, above average or good, they just, they just are really good at the fundamentals. They didn't master the fundamentals. And so what is one of the ways uh, you try to invest in the players at the Dolphins so they can master the fundamentals off the field. Sure. I think one example that comes to mind right away is just financial literacy. Mm -hmm. These guys are coming into the NFL and all of a sudden, boom, you get all this money. I think in 2020, the league minimum for rookies is going to be $510,000 mm. that they're going to have. Imagine somebody coming from nothing. Now, all of a sudden, I'm going to be making at least half a million bucks. Right, right. What are the fundamentals of money management? B before taxes, before taxes. Right, right, right. before taxes, after yeah. taxes, we're looking at roughly 380, you know. Yeah, yeah. Three, three, three still get money, but yeah. Still, you're still getting money. Now, here's the thing. Cash flow management. We go all the way back to the very fundamentals. Hey, what's going out and what's coming in? Mm. If people look at the money that they get, and their mind automatically goes to, oh, I got stocks, I got investments, I got to invest this. Oh, I got to, I got to put this in the home so I can flip it and make more money. I got to make right, this right, money, right. money, all this, all this. Yo, that's great. Right. Right. Whenever Tom Brady steps on the football field, his first stop isn't, oh, I got to win six Super Bowls. Right. Right. Yo, whenever he stepped into the NFL in 2000, it was, I got to make a team. Right. You know? So yeah. what do I need to do? I need to make sure that my footwork is correct. How is my hip movement going around? How am right. I taking care of my body? So whenever we're talking to these guys about money, it's, do you have a budget? Right. Do you know exactly how much money is going out? Mm -hmm. How much money is going in? It's coming in and where every single dollar is going. You're right. telling every dollar what to do and it's not just catching you with unexpected. Mm. So I think that's one of the most important pieces right there um, just from a financial literacy standpoint. And then from there, then we can start talking about, okay, well, let's, let's manage your lifestyle. If you know this is how much is coming in, how much you're, uh, you're, you're, you're spending, well, let's set a goal for how much you're trying to save. Does the way that you live right now align with how much money you're trying to save? Okay, mm. let's see if cut back on that spending. Right, right. Are you going to the club every night? Are you buying bottles all the time? What, right, what, right. What's going on? Right. right. So let's really take some time to assess this. Why did you just buy a freaking uh, $80,000 car? Right. You know? Yeah. Whenever you were in college, you were driving a car that was worth eight thousand dollars. Right, it would be just fine. Yeah, I understand people want more for themselves. People want to re reward themselves, especially guys. Like guys have a certain level of pride with the vehicles. Yes, <laughs> like yo, you, you know it's a depreciating asset. As soon as yeah. you drive out the lot, the value is going to go down. But you can't drive a house. You know, yeah. whenever you go somewhere. People can't say, oh, he must be doing well because his house is like this. You can't right, take right. that around with you, but you can yep. do that with a car. Yep. I don't know what it is. It's like an ego thing or what it is, but you know. Man, I, but I think it feels good, though, on the inside. You know what I mean? You it, you drive around. You're like, oh, look at this. You know people are looking at you. Yeah. They're, probably, they're probably really not even looking at you, but you, in your mind, they're like, oh, right. yeah. Look at hey, this and, and to be honest, you want to be able to have incentive. You want to yeah. reward yourself for being able to get to a certain level, right? Like right. we're talking about a certain level that you thought you were going to achieve. Right. Yeah. And ain't nothing wrong with that. But, but hey. Irresponsibly, yeah. that's when it becomes a factor. Yeah. I remember a guy was looking at buying an Audi for $65,000, right? Mm -hmm. Brand new, off the line, was $65,000. Mm -hmm. It took us two weeks for him to decide if he was going to get a certified pre-owned one 
that was uh, more in the tool. I want to say it was twenty six thousand. Right, right, right. Put five thousand dollars of work into it with the paint and everything, yeah. and ultimately it ended up being like thirty one thousand mm-hmm. dollars. It looked even better than the sixty five thousand dollar one that he wanted to mm-hmm. buy initially. It had more right. mileage on it and everything, but you know he was able to get it insured. It was certified pre owned, and it looked better. Well, shoot, mm-hmm. now you made a smart financial decision because you didn't just go and blow your money. Right, right, right. So, you know, things like that. Just understanding the basics and the fundamentals of mm-hmm. financial literacy and money management. So you can really, I mean, I mean, I know this for sure. Like, if if you skip the basics, if you skip the basics, you're leading yourself down a, a treacherous path. You know what I mean? A torturous path, torturous, treacherous. Yeah, treacherous path. Treacherous. That's what I meant to say. Treacherous. Uh, we can, see, we can edit this out. I probably won't though. But um, you can lead yourself down a treacherous path because you skip the fundamental. You skip the strong foundation. And I, I love that, you know, that, that that's what you're doing. Uh, so what are some of the ways in your life that you are trying to master the skills to uh, do your mission for the Congo? Yeah. Oh, for Congo specifically? Yeah, yeah. Um, whew. All right. So for that one specifically, uh, so my dad spends half the year in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Mm-hmm. So he comes back here for like two months at a time. Then he'll be there two months at a time or three months here, two months there, one month here, one month there. But for the most part, half the year is split between the U.S. and Congo. Mm-hmm. And he's very well connected in the country. And one thing that I did two years ago was I connected with the Olympic Committee over mm-hmm. in Congo. I set up a meeting with them whenever I was there. I went back for the first time in 20 years, which was mind-blowing. It was it, incredible experience, but right, right. setting up a meeting with them, letting them know what I was, what I was thinking and how to align that. Uh, last week, I was actually in Las Vegas for some league meetings in, uh, in, in for, for the NFL. Mm-hmm. And whenever I was there, there were all these different organizations and representatives from these companies who mm-hmm. currently are aligned with the NFL and, and they do stuff from a uh, community outreach standpoint. Mm-hmm. There was one guy in particular who, anytime that I go to these type of events, I always try to step out of my comfort zone and meet five people that I mm-hmm. don't know. Mm-hmm. So I sit down with him. This is night one. I sit down with him. We're talking. And he's telling me what he does globally mm-hmm. to expand the game of flag football. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, oh, wow. Well, here's what I've always had in mind for Congo and how I want to be a st- to establish youth football over there and mm-hmm. develop sports and all this stuff. And he was like, yo, Next time you think about this stuff, you ought to give me a call. So he gives me a call, his card. Um, you know, I, I already stored all of his contact information, his email, his cell phone, mm-hmm. and all that. And I have it on my to-do list to shoot him an email to see if there's any synergy of how we can make that happen in Congo. Because he currently works um, 1,500 different cities in the U.S. Mm-hmm. that his company's involved with. Uh, they just started doing stuff with Canada, mm-hmm. uh, China, mm-hmm. and uh, in the U.K., Mm-hmm. So he's global. It's right, only a matter right. of time until they, they they have their footprint in Africa. And right, whatever. right. I know I want to be a part of it. I ain't right. trying to get behind. Yeah. I'm telling you, hey, whenever NFL Africa becomes a thing, hey, Eva Toba better be the executive director or something. <laughs> right. So, hey, what's today? March nineteenth, two thousand twenty. Yeah. The time is ten fifty four. Yeah. 11.54 Eastern time, but yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm trying to have a part of that. NFL Africa, hey, God is my witness. I'm telling you, I'm going to be involved with it in some way, shape, or form. Right. So, I know that I want to do that with the sport of football, with the sport of soccer, um, with basketball, and even some some or some touch with uh, with rugby, because I know mm-hmm. that's the third biggest sport right now. So, yeah, honestly, cultivating those relationships with your Olympic committee, uh, mm-hmm. and also partnering with the right individuals here in the U.S. that know how to expand that. Right, the biggest right, thing right. for me is I need a lot more information on um, how to run that type of program, whether mm-hmm. it's just from a, uh, an individual sports standpoint or if it's like a whole entire league. Right, <laughs> right, right. right. So, yeah, that's what yeah. I'm uh, so, and Honestly, I have, to, I have to write these things down whenever they come to my mind. Mm-hmm. I'm going to forget them. A lot of, sometimes the biggest lie we tell to ourselves is, oh, I'm going to remember that. Yeah, you're not. <laughs> one of my one of my friends, one of my best friends down here in Miami, his name is Reese Whiteley. He has this thing called the Magic City Cup mm-hmm. because Miami is such a diverse melting pot of a city in the U.S. There are so many different cultures, mm-hmm. 
few different types of people that are represented. So what he decided to do, and he did this for the first time last year, is he had all these different cultures come up with their own soccer teams, mm-hmm. right? So you have the Chilean team, you got the Cuban team, you have the mm-hmm. Dominican team, and what they do is, you know, the Haitian team. Right, right. I was about to say, where the Haitians at? Yeah, okay. all about the Haitians, right? right. I mean, Trinidadians. Right. It's a tournament in the city of Miami. It's a week-long deal. Did it last year for the first time, and he got David Beckham to be a part of it. Mm-hmm. He got Coca-Cola to sponsor the event. So right, now they're right. doing it for the second year in a row. Has he nice. been sponsors? And hold on, is he's well, part of your network? Oh, yeah. We, okay. we met because we go to church together. Right, right, okay. And I straight up told him, whenever he did the social media launch about it happening in 2020, mm-hmm. I said, hey, next time that y'all have a meeting, I just want to sit in. Right, right. Like, I, I, I don't know if you even want me to contribute. Right, right, I will right. in any way that I can. Yeah. I at least just want to sit in. Okay, hold on real quick. Hold on. The operations. Okay. That go behind all this yep. so that I can implement it for myself at a greater scale. Oh. Like, so, uh, man, that's huge. That is huge. Ladies and gentlemen, not even ladies and gentlemen, that one person that has that dream to that mission Listen, if you really want to accomplish your mission, if you really want to uh, master those skills, ask questions, surround yourself with people who are already 10 steps ahead and sit and learn and don't think you need to rush it. Serve. You're trying to serve, you know, and and that's that's super awesome, because even if even in like sports, if you want to be a better football player, you surround yourself with people who are in the NFL or yeah. in uh, college or who are 10 steps ahead of you and you just yeah. get around them and just learn. And then now you're building a strong foundation for the skills that you need to learn. And then you can, be, then you can begin to master them like yeah. what you're doing. That's so cool. That's and really cool. A lot of times, man, a lot of times it's how do I add value and the easiest mm-hmm. way to add value. People are only going to be around them if you add value to, 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 to their lives. Right. Mm-hmm. So, Always ask yourself, how can I make this person's life easier? Right. And go and do that. Just do your best to make this person's life easier. Don't look to take credit for any of it. Mm-hmm. But whenever you do that, people say, wow, this person's valuable in my life. I need to keep right. this person around. Mm-hmm. And, it, and, and, and so when it comes to that, the biggest question, not even the question, man, because the question is, how can I make this person's life easier? Mm-hmm. But just remember this, your greatness is determined by your service. Mm-hmm. More that you can serve. The Say it one more time. Serve. Your greatness mm-hmm. is determined by your service. Your greatness okay. is determined by your service. And the more that you can serve, the greater that you're going to be as an individual. Mm-hmm. I love it. I love it. So, Eve, man, I appreciate your your time. You know what I mean? I know you have things to do. Or maybe you really don't have anything to do because we're on lockdown. I got, I, got, I got some projects to work on, but yeah, okay. <laughs> unconventional right now. Yeah. So um man we talked about your mission which i I love your mission man congo uh bridging the gap between uh where they're at with their sports and bringing you know football there bringing just all sports there you know i mean uh that's a dope mission especially with the what you're doing now and then you're investing in learning and shoot ladies and gentlemen in five years three years ten years who knows NFL nfl africa uh and then I love love your mindset. Have a growth mindset, man. That's that's the key, man. Have a growth mindset and, and always uh, continue to do things in your life to to grow. And then your mastery, man. Who who's in your network? Uh, and how are you serving them? And, and how are you adding value to other people's lives? And, and this is so applicable for athletes, for aspiring athletes, for uh, business leaders, um, and just a person who just wants to be a better family person. You know what I mean? Like yeah. this is, this is great information. Eve, I really appreciate you. And uh, do you have any last comments you want to say? Yeah. Last thing I want to say is, man, I appreciate you, Mill. Hey, let me just say this real quick. This is somebody who I feel like challenges me on a regular basis. He allows me to think outside the box on a regular basis. And because you're always ideating, because you feel like you always have to be moving and, and pushing the needle and really challenging the status quo, it rubs off on people. It's absolutely contagious. And, you know, people are talking about coronavirus is contagious, man. But I think that <laughs> something that might be even more contagious is, uh, you know, aspiration, uh, ambition, and inspiration. So keep doing you, man. Um, everything that you do, I can say for a fact, impacts other people. 
and it, it pushes me even to be a better version of myself. So appreciate you, brother. Yes, sir. Man, have a good day, everyone. Uh, like, subscribe, share. I would greatly appreciate it. And uh, y'all have a wonderful day. Peace. I got my team and it's all I need.